As we're training people with autism, recognize that communication is key. You'll find some people that speak slowly and there's a tendency when people need a little extra time to respond, you'll want to answer for them. Don't, just allow them time to gather their thoughts, they'll respond. They're people who are nonverbal. Those are challenging, but they communicate and you have to learn to communicate the way they communicate. Fortunately, we have technology. Use that to your advantage in order to maximize and to make communication most efficient. As you go along, you'll find that adapting to a new environment may be challenging. That autistic person has to come in and adjust to not only their immediate supervisors, but other coworkers. Now, most people are aware of autism. They perhaps have an autistic family member, but working with them involves uh, uh, other areas that they may not be familiar with. Is this someone that's very meticulous? Is it someone that has to have things done in a certain way every day or else it's going to be a bad day? Is this autistic person someone that prefers texting or, or email as opposed to face-to-face -face communications? Those are things that you'll discover as you work with that person, you get to know them, as they interact with others. I think it's ideal if there could be a mentor, say someone that's experienced in the job place or on the job, someone who is not autistic, have that autistic new employee shadow that person, have them uh, serve as a mentor if they're willing, and have them watch and observe. You'll discover that autistic people learn in different fashions. Some are very visual learners, others are more tactile learners. Uh, I read a story of a young man that was uh, very tac a tactile learner. He started his own woodworking business. He now makes exquisite, beautiful handcrafted cabinets and homemade furnishings because he has an innate, uh, almost an intuition for the wood. He loves the texture, the smell, and uh, he's just very good and he's meticulous and very detail oriented and he makes beautiful pieces and sells them all over the world. So we need to recognize and adapt to the strengths of the person with autism. And they tend to be very focused, very focused. Uh, sometimes even a narrow focus. One person may enjoy bridges, another may tell you everything there is to know about architecture or uh, waterfalls. They tend to gravitate towards that area in which they're most comfortable. You may want to find out what is their preferred method of learning. Some people like to read. Some people are just voracious readers. Others tend to like videos. They need animation. They need excitement, emotion. Others prefer to just talk one-on-one -on -one in a very quiet, subdued, uh, very relaxed atmosphere. I recommend if you're an employer and you, if you have autistic employees, have a timeout room. From time to time, they just get overwhelmed. Their sensory uh, issues kick in. They just need to take a break. They need to decompress, have a quiet room with no TV, come back, and they're good. Uh, some autistic people, they, they need to manage their stress level, and they'll do various gestures with their hand movements or they make facial uh, expressions. We may consider them out of the ordinary, but it's how they keep their emotions and keep their stress level down. I read a story of one young man walks around in a circle five times. Can't be three, can't be four, can't be six. It has to be five times whenever he feels stress elevating. He just stands up and he turns in a circle five times every day. And you'll find that autistic people like predictability, they like a pattern, they like a routine. If you, you're going to make sudden changes, notify them. That could just set them off and they could really have a terrible meltdown if they reach a point where they just become overloaded from a sensory, sensory perspective.